Okay, guys, today I have another special guest in my office. Welcome to Learning About the Chi Square. And I hope that this lecture is really helpful. Yes, welcome, Scooby Doo. I'm glad you've come. And let's talk about chi-square analysis, which really just gives us the probability, again, with our probability, that ratios are evidence of linkage, okay? Or we are trying to show that um, a deviation from this one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, to one <laughs> ratio, is really a representative of linkage of, chromos of genes on a chromosome, or is it just a chance event? Right? We talked about last time that if your numbers aren't exactly one to one to one to one, does that mean they're linked or is that just by chance? And we also talked about probability with small sample sizes. Small sample sizes, yes, you can get 10 heads in a row. So a very small sample size, you're not going to get one to one to one to one. So the bigger your sample size, the more you can trust the data. But how do we decide what's a big enough sample size? Well, we don't have to. We use this chi-square test to tell us statistically, is it chance that it's not one-to-one-to-one? -to -one -to -one? Which one? <laughs> or is it really because the genes are linked? Okay, so again, it's a goodness of fit. Does it fit what the expected? So the observed, what we see or what we count to what we would expect based on a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one ratio. <laughs> Thank you, Scooby. I know, it is pretty entertaining. Okay, so in order to apply the chi-square test, first we have to frame our hypothesis, right? We are, we are trying to support a hypothesis or negate or disprove. Remember, we never, ever, ever can prove anything, okay? We can support a hypothesis, but we can never prove that it's true. We can disprove it. We can prove that it's not true. And we have to set our hypothesis on something that's testable. Our, hy our null hypothesis or hypothesis is that what we see is not different from what we expect. Okay? That would mean there is no linkage. Not linked is always, 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 always our hypothesis, okay? Always not linked, because that means if something's not linked, what do we expect to see? We expect to see one-to-one-to-one-to-one to one to one to one ratio. <sighs> Playing devil's advocate, what if we decided to say, oh, well, what if I made my hypothesis linked? Well, what would you expect if it's 100% linked and never, ever, ever, ever have crossing over between it? Yeah, it would be one-to-one. -one. But we almost never have a situation where there's all or nothing as far as crossing over is concerned. There's always something in between. So how can you come up with anything to expect or what, what should it fit if we don't know what the ratio is going to be? <laughs> Yeah, I know. So we always, always, always expect to see one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one or independent assortment, not linked, and then we're going to try to disprove that, okay? For this type of uh, probability analysis, statistical analysis, we need to know our degrees of freedom, the amount of classes, which data can be grouped into minus one. We always do two classes for the gametes. A parental class, right, the two that are parental, that look like what they started, and then the two that are recombinant, okay? So we don't use four separate classes. We always group them into two different classes. So the two classes, two minus one equals one. So degrees of freedom are always, always, always one. No exceptions. <laughs> yes, Scooby, it's true. They're always one. Always into two groups. Degrees of freedom is always one. Now, 
here's some a chart or a table to show us two separate experiments. So these are completely two separate things here. Okay, experiment number one and experiment number two. We're going to look at them separately. Remember, we're doing a test cross, right? Big A, little A, big B, little B times little A, little A, little B, little B. Okay, the possible genotypes of all the gametes, right? Big A and big B could get together. Big A and little b could get together. Little A and little b. Or little a and big B, right? That's if independent assortment happens. Genes are on separate chromosomes. That's our assumption, right? We are making an assumption. We assume what's going on. And that should give us one to one to one to one. Okay? And so we do the experiment. We do the cross. And in experiment number one, we count 17 with big A, big B. 14, this guy. 8, this guy. And 11, this guy. Does this appear to be one to one to one to one? Hmm. It's a little off. Right? I don't know. What do you think? Well, if we separate them into our two classes, like we talked about, the parentals are always the ones the way they started, okay, in the parental cross, right? And so that would be the guys that were, right, big A, big A, big B, big B, times little A, little A, little B, little B. So this right? Those should be our parentals, right? Back from the P, this is the F1, and then we do a test cross. So that, my friends, is what we're looking for as parental. If that's confusing, I have a little cheat sheet way to do it. So the parentals are always the highest numbers, okay? The recombinants are always the two lower numbers. Or they're exactly the same. If it's 100% crossing over or if they're on different chromosomes, they will always be 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, equal numbers. If they really are linked and we're only getting crossing over sometimes, right, here's the sometimes crossing over happens. It can never be more than what the parental is. So the higher numbers are always the parental. So we add these two together, and that equals 31. This is what we observed. This is what we counted. Okay, observed is just what you count. What do you see? Recombinance, 19. How many do we expect? Oh my gosh, I don't know how to figure that out. I know, Scooby. So I will show you, and then you will get it, and you will be fine. So let's show you. Expected is just if it were 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, or 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25 and our total is 50, what would, this num what would this number be? What should that number be? Well, if 50 is our total... Right? These guys should be half, should be 25. These guys should be half. These should equal 25, which means each one should be 12.5. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes, I think it does. Makes total sense. Come on, Scooby. Are you paying attention? Come on, really. Okay, the expected, what we expect to see if it's not linked, 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. 25% and 25% is 50%. 50% 50 of 50 is 25. 25 and 25 is 50. 50% 50 of 50 is 25. Expected, 25 parentals. Expected, 25 recombinants. If not linked. And that's what we are trying to figure out. Okay, and then experiment number two, it's the same idea. They just got higher numbers, right? But these two are still highest. That has to be parental. These are the lowest. This has to be recombinant, right? The observed 
62 of these guys, just add them together. 38 of these guys, just add them together. What do we expect? Well, now our total is 100. We expect 50 of these and 50 of these. Or 25, 25, 25, and 25. See? Isn't that easy? I think we finally get it. What do you think? All right, Scooby's with us. And just as a reminder, always, 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 two phenotypic typic groups or classes, right? Parentals, how they existed originally on the chromosomes. Recombinant, non-parental, the crossing overs, degrees of freedom, always one. Two classes minus one equals one. Why do we care? We're going to find out. Here's the chi-square equation. I know it looks a little scary, but you guys are all going to be fine. I'm... Okay, Scooby, get a grip on yourself. Okay, it's not that bad. Okay, this symbol here is chi-square. Chi-square. Not x-squared. We're not solving for x. Not solving for x. Okay? It's just the chi-square value is equal to, anybody remember this guy? Holy crap. The sum of these two equations. Right? Right here. The parentals plus the recombinants. Okay, and these are split here into experiment one and experiment two. So this is one chi-square analysis. This is the second chi-square analysis. And if we go back and quickly look at that chart, where the hell did she get these numbers? Well, this, let's zoom in, shall we? Ooh, yes, I like what you've done here. Mm hmm yes. Okay. This number is the observed. Right? If you look back at that stupid little chart, 31. This is the expected. 31 minus 25 squared, so we square this part, over expected, divided by expected, plus, so we do that, oops, that first, then, and we get a value, then observed, or the recombinant, minus expected, notice it's the same number, squared, divided by the expected. And that gives us a number. In this case, 288. 2.88, sorry. The chi-square value is 2.88. Well, who the heck cares? Nobody knows what that means anyways, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the same for experiment two. The numbers are just different, right? Observed minus expected squared over expected right, plus observed minus expected squared over expected, add those two together, 5.76. So now we have our chi-square values for both of these. What do we do with these? Well, we use these in the chi-square analysis statistics chart to determine our p-value, or how likely something happened by chance. Okay, so let's move on and check that out. Now, we take our chi-square values for experiment number one, 2.88, and we plug them into this table of critical chi-square values. And we see that 2.88 is less than 3.84. 3.84 is the cutoff point for where we, yes, reject the null hypothesis. Anything less than that number, we cannot reject the null hypothesis hypothesis. So if we do not reject it, that means the null hypothesis is not linked. We're not rejecting it, meaning we're accepting it. The genes are not linked. In experiment number two, so there wasn't enough evidence to say that they were linked, okay? We have to stick with they're not linked. Those numbers are close enough to one to one to one to one to be by chance, not because of linkage. 
But if we do another experiment and we have, remember this is more, right? This was 100 total, this was only 50. If we have 100 total, we get a number of 5.76 for our chi-square value. We plug that in here. Is that greater than or less than 3.84? Yes, my friends, it's greater than. So we do reject the null hypothesis. If we reject not linked, that means they are linked. So in this experiment, the numbers deviated far enough from 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to suggest they are linked. Okay, and so that's how we use this. This chart gives us the p-value, the value of the probability of whether the deviation is by chance or if it's really because of linkage. And so that's what we do with those chi-square values. We have to put them in here, and look, we only use the top of this chart because we always have degrees of freedom of 1 because we have two classes minus 1 equals 1 degree of freedom and so these are the values we use just this column so sample size makes a difference bigger is better okay that's just the way it is for <clears throat> statistics <laughs> Yeah, I know you think that's funny, Scooby. Very good. Remember, we're using real numbers, not percentages. None of that. Whatever comes out of the chi-square, right? The chi-square value, we plug into that chart to get the p-value. Okay? That's really all it is. And we let statistics decide linked or not linked, right? Accept the null hypothesis or do not reject it. It's not linked. If we reject it, that means they're linked. Okay, so here's an example of a problem that you guys will need to do. I want you to do this problem, okay, doing the same way that we did the other ones, and I'd like you to upload your answers. So here is your question, right? First you need, what? We already filled this out, your null hypothesis. You need to find the observed. What are the expected values? Set up your chi-square analysis. What are your degrees of freedom? Do you accept or reject the null hypothesis? And then you're going to screenshot and upload. It should be under uh, the Wednesday, whatever the heck date it was, the 1st. And it will be something about, you know, iPad, homework, and linkage. Okay, so please do that, and then, uh, yeah, then you're ready, and then you're good, and then you get some points, and it'll all be good, okay? <laughs> oh, super chicken, what the heck are you doing here? Oy vey, oh my goodness, I can't believe what's in my office today. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's crazy. All right, guys, that's it for today. Do your homework, and I talk to you soon.